Hi everyone, I'm Karen from Close to My Heart. I'm excited to be with you here today and teach you a little class. Um, I am the manager of the art studio here at Close to My Heart and so I love scrapbooking and I love art, not just at work, at home. I'm a huge avid scrapbooker myself and I hope I'll have a few fun things to teach you today. It's a little chilly here in Utah today. It's raining, which is making me feel all the fall vibes, which is my favorite. I love fall. And we're actually gonna talk a little bit about fall today in the class I'm teaching. So let's get started on that. Here in front of me, I actually have our fall collection. It's called Cozy Up. It's gorgeous, as you can see. It has beautiful, warm, rich colors and papers and stickers. And we always um, create a couple of stamp sets that coordinate with each of our collections. And this stamp set, we're gonna look at this one close up, is um, actually a coordinating stamp set with Cozy Up. But if you look at it, you can see there's so much more to it than fall, as there is the papers too. Um, so this is very book themed. There's a stack of books, there's an open book, there's some teapots and a cup of tea, lots of words that go with feeling cozy, like um, cozy up, cup of tea, cozy up with a good book, just one more chapter, my weekend is booked, leaves are falling, books are calling. And if you are like me, I love, love, love to read and I have hopefully passed that on to my children and grandchildren because they are always, they always have their nose in a book as well. So I wanted to show you what I created with this stamp set and that Cozy Up collection. I'm just gonna move back over here where you can see a little bit more at a distance. And this is a layout of my son who's now 29. When he was a baby, he, um, he loved looking at my husband's wildlife magazines and books. In fact, his first words were big buck not mama or dada, which is a little crazy. And that is the story that I told here with a picture of him with one of those wildlife magazines. And I used the fall collection, which made total sense because this was taken in the fall. And not only that, um, all of the wildlife things that happen in our family in the mountains do happen in the fall. So I did make this one feel very fallish, but I thought it would be fun to show you how we can take this same stamp set create the exact same layout, but different papers that feel nothing like fall. And we'll do that together. But I wanted to show you a couple of things that as I looked at this, obviously I felt like I needed to change a little bit. I want the cozy up with a good book. I want the just one more chapter. Leaves are falling, books are calling didn't actually fit what I was doing because leaves weren't falling on what I brought to do with you today. So I thought we could even mask off the books are calling and just use that. So we'll do that today and see how that turns out and maybe just rearrange a little bit how this cluster is working. And I also brought another set of papers that's in our catalog that expires the end of August with the Cozy Up papers. These are called mix-ins. We, we create these every catalog that can just mix in with the other collections that are in the book. It kind of is like an extender. But today I thought I'd use them to create the layout. And I brought a picture of two of my grandchildren. This is Palmer and Oaks. And they were reading and their mom thought it was so cute and snapped a picture and I'm so glad. So I thought we would scrapbook that together today. Oaks is in his Spider-Man pajamas, which is very appropriate because he's actually looking at a Marvel book. And so I thought I'd play off that red and blue color scheme that Oaks is wearing and start with these papers. Now I don't have any red here, but there is some red in the Cozy Up collection. And look what happens when I pull it out and put it over here. It looks like a whole different kind of paper, right? So I'm just gonna start cutting the three by three squares that are part of this layout. I have um, gone ahead and cut like the base and the layers that lead up to that ahead of time so that you don't have to sit and watch me do that. And I'm just going to sit to cut a bunch of squares um, in the reds and blues and maybe even some of this gray that's in here. And we'll just see what we can build just like the one I built that was fall. This paper, all of our paper is two-sided and I might use both sides of this one because um, it's a fun blue and I actually love it. I don't know how you guys feel, but I love it when I take colors from a photo and then maybe pull them back a little bit by making them either lighter, a lighter shade or um, just not as large and in charge as the photo, maybe just in the background a little bit so that 
the photo really takes center stage and um, is the focus of the layout. There's so many ways to do that, but one of the ways I love to do that is by using a little bit more muted colors than what are in the photo, but still playing off those um, colors. So let's see, are there any other papers in here I want to use? Definitely going to want to use some navy, which is actually a more muted, even though it's a bright um, paper. If you look at it next to this photo, this is more of like a almost royal blue, almost the blue that you get in a, an eight crayon box. And this is a deeper blue. And so this is still going to pop on there. Does that make sense? So I think I will use some of this navy in here. Just put a few of those. All right, I may have enough squares there. We'll see, I'm gonna start laying everything out. I brought, um, and just so you know, in case you are wanting to um, recreate this same pattern, I'll give you some sizes. Um, I started with obviously a 12 by 12 piece of our white daisy cardstock, and then I took the sapphire color, the navy color that's in the mix-in and cut it to 11 and a half by 11 and a half. I would say if there's anything you would see in my own art is I do this a lot where I have an outside border and then um, a piece on top of that. I love that feel of a frame on a scrapbook page. Um, and you could always gut this if you wanted to save on paper. So this layer is 11 and a half by 11 and a half. And then I think this next layer is 10 by 10. I'll let you know for sure. Yes, it is. It's 10 by 10. And I'm going to add that next, just right in the center. Maybe I should actually um, move this over to the side just a tiny bit so that you can see the layout that I created with the wallpapers. And at the same time, so you can see how we're kind of duplicating it. Maybe that's a good idea. Okay, I'm just going to grab a bunch of these squares that we cut and start laying them out on my page. Okay, obviously I don't like that that's right next to each other. So I'm gonna move some things around a little bit. This one here gets covered up quite a bit in the middle. So I don't want just one red showing because it's obviously the pot on this page. So I think I'll move a little bit of that around. Maybe. Even those are the same thing next to each other, this one actually gets covered up. In fact, I wouldn't even put that on there other than it's gonna help me space this page. So I think I'm gonna, I like where I'm landing here mostly. Maybe I wanna, we'll see. I'm just gonna start gluing them down and then we're gonna feel like if I need to move something, I can move it before this adhesive becomes too stuck. There's about a quarter inch of a border all the way around and between. Um, we had a 10 inch white daisy square here and these are three inch squares. So you can see that, that that would be a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, and a quarter would make it 10. So I'm just eyeballing that. You could measure if you wanted to. And I even stamped some of the pieces we're gonna use ahead of time, knowing what this layout looked like. Um, and brought a few things that I thought might be fun to add to the page that um, that would make sense to add to this page with the colors and the theme I'm using with these grandkids reading. I plan to do uh, a reading layout about myself too, which I guess my kids would probably think, actually I'm trading this, um, it's kind of funny because I now read mostly on a Kindle because I can make the font as big as I want and lay in bed and read and not have to worry about wearing my glasses. So I'm gonna tell that story on a layout. Um, I wish that I could still lay in bed with a book and just read out of a normal book, but there would be no words that I could actually read. <laughs> it would be too blurry without my glasses or contacts and I like to fall asleep reading. Okay, right now that's looking a little weirdly balanced because of these two, but like I said, that one's gonna be covered up and I think this is gonna end up looking really good. And I'm just gonna lay my photo here for reference. And let me grab a few things that I brought 
pre stamped and done. I did the cozy up with a good book, but I did it on the larger circle, knowing I was going to have to mask part of that. So I think I'm going to want to tuck this one maybe a little behind my photo. Then I've got a smaller circle for the books are calling, which we're going to stamp together in just a second here. I've just added some stitches to those with a black pen. Same with this little title here, just one more chapter, and I'm going to dovetail that. Then I left, um, I colored my books. Here I colored my books with colored pencil. Here I did them with um, tri-blend alcohol markers and thought it would be fun to, to show you a little bit about shading with those today. So I'm actually going to take what we've got here and come over to the close-up camera because a few of these things I think will be fun for you to see close up. So let me just move this over here. There we go. I'm going to bring in a stamp pad, my stamp set, and uh, stamp. Let's see, what do I need here? I need this and this and my scissors. And that might get us where we need. Okay, let's start with dovetailing this just one more chapter. Um, I like that I'd like the ends to be dovetailed and I thought I'd show you my dovetail trick. You might already know this trick. I'm just going to take my scissors and make a little slit right in the center. Then go from the corners up, which creates a nice, beautiful centered dovetail. And when I have a wider piece, I'll just, you know, use my versa mat here to measure on where the center is. It makes it pretty easy. Okay, let's take out this. Leaves are falling, books are calling. And we're going to mask off books are calling. Now I have to tell you, all my stamps at home, I cut apart my acrylic stamps. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do this because people always have very mixed feelings about cutting their stamps. I have no problem with it because they're very easy to just lay back on a block together um, and piece them together and stamp the whole stamp all over again. It's not a hard thing to do. But I'm going to show you this so that um, if you are a person that has a hard time cutting your stamps, you'll have this option if you've never done it before. Now the falling, the F and the G come down to the side of where the books are. So I'm going to mask those off. I'm just using sticky notes. You could use masking tape, um, anything that sticks. Okay, so I've got that masked around the books and then I'm just also going to take one and mask off this top right here. So now all I have showing is books are calling and I'm going to ink this up with an intense black pad. Make sure it's nice and evenly inked, which is why it's so great to have clear stamps and a clear block to put them on. And then I'm going to pull off pieces that I used to mask with. And I can see that I have just a tiny bit on the letters right above it. So I'm just going to grab a wet towel and wipe that off so that it doesn't stamp. And if it does, then we're just going to um, find something to layer over the top of it. <laughs> There's always a way to fix any kind of mistakes in scrapbooking. You could always glue something on top or cluster or whatever. Okay, so I've got that all wiped off. I'm going to grab the foam piece that comes in our stamp sets and um, put that under me because a cushion always makes things stamp better. We're going to stamp Books Are Calling right there in the center and hope that that stuff I wiped off up above doesn't show too much. If it does, I have a solution. There we go, it turned out pretty perfect. That is awesome, especially when you're on camera, it's nice when it turns out perfect, right? Okay, let's, um, let's now take what we've done and I'm going to, as you can see on the layout before, I um, did a little bit of um, blending with some inks and I thought I'd do the same thing here with a blue, a light blue ink, which I think will coordinate nicely with our page. So I've got my Speckled Aid Distress Oxide and um, a blending brush. And I'm gonna save this one to do right before I put it on the page so it has a minute to dry. I've got these others that I already had. 
And I'm just gonna pull a stretch paper over here. I'm gonna dot a little bit off so that I don't have any blotches or blobs. And I'm just going to carefully add a little bit here to my, I'm gonna, like I said, tuck this behind a photo so I don't need to do it down below, just the part that'll show. I just think that's such a fun way to accent something is with just a little bit of ink. You could use a regular stamp pad or Distress Oxide inks for something like this. You could even use watercolor paints to add a little bit of a swash back behind some things, just to add a little bit of color. And then while this one, while this one dries a little bit, I'm gonna show you some coloring with markers. The markers we carry are called Tri-Blend. They are alcohol markers, which makes them blend great. But the thing I love about them is that, um, they have three shades in each marker, so I don't have to worry about picking the marker that's going to be the perfect lighter shade or darker shade. They give me that. And I'm going to use the red one. I'm using, let's see, true blue shades, dark red blend, and brown gray blend. But I just left one of the reds to color. Um, and I am going to slide my paper in here because if you have used alcohol markers, you know that they bleed a little bit. So I'm going to start with my lightest red. And we'll color this bottom book might also be noticing that I've added a little bit of metallic gold in there. Um, and I'll show you how I've done that too. It's fun to duplicate layouts, don't you think? Especially when they're going in different albums. Um, so that they don't sit right next to one that you've duplicated. Because if you make a layout that you love, why not use that same design again somewhere else? And that one of Dawson reading the... Wildlife magazine is going to go in a much different album than the one that for this year where these kids are reading. Okay, now I'm going to take a darker shade and I'm just going to kind of add that darkness where it would be darker, shaded by other books around the edges, because of course the spine of the book would be curved. So the part that poked out the most, the center of that curve, would be the part that has the lightest part of the book. Okay, so you can see that I've added that. I'm even gonna go in with my very darkest red and do a little bit like in the corners where I know that the biggest shading would be. You can always go back if you're seeing too much of a line where you've shaded, you can always go back and go over where that line intersects with the lighter color. So I'll show you what I mean. I've used the darkest there. I'm just gonna come back in with the lighter and I'm just gonna kind of color that over the top of where it meets the lighter. And then we get that beautiful shade without seeing any lines at all. Sometimes you don't need to do that. In fact, most of the times you don't need to do that. If you're quick, the alcohol's still wet and it's still like bleeding through the paper so it blends itself beautifully. But I wanted to show you that trick. Okay, now I'm also gonna grab my gold metallic markers. We love these. These are full of a paint grade kind of a, um, an ink. You can see it like there's a ball in there, almost like a can of spray paint. And there's three different tips that come with those. Love these. And I'm just going to take my fine tip and we're going to add it to, whoops, the book here, carefully. Actually, I'm going to use one that's slightly bigger. We're going to add it to the edge of the book. And we'll have like that little bit of a gold accent and right there down the center. And then we've got that cute stack of books with that gold metallic accent. Now let's come back over here to our books are calling and hopefully I've given that enough time that it's not going to smudge too much. And I'm, instead of rubbing on here, I'm just going to pounce so that I don't cause any bleeding of the black ink before it's all the way dry. The kind of ink I used, Intense Black, is made to be able to use with alcohol markers, any kind of paint or coloring in, and it doesn't move once it's dry. All right, let's go back to our um, other camera so you can see again from a distance. And I'm going to get organized again here, and we're gonna put our page together. Now, one thing that I did on this other page that I really liked was I did a little bit of splattering and so you can also splatter with these metallic gold markers. So let's do that on this page since I've kind of used gold more on this page. And I'm gonna move this out of the way so that I don't get gold all over that. 
sometimes I'll even do this like in a box so that I don't get things covered with gold splatters. And I'm just going to take one of the larger tips and I'm going to make myself a little bit of a puddle here so that I have some ink that is like really wet, quite a bit of it. Here we go. You just push on these and the ink, that's how you actually activate them too when you first get them. So I'm picking up some of that puddle and I'm just going to take it and tap it against here. You can also tap it against your finger, but I love doing it against something hard. I feel like I get a prettier splatter when I do it against something hard. And just add some in the corners. That makes extra cute. And then maybe I'll even add it to some of these pieces we just created. That'll be fun to have it on those, I think. But we'll pick up a little more of that ink so that it's extra wet and will splatter well. And I'll just let it splatter onto some of these other pieces we just created. Really cute. Extra cute. A little more on the top there and on this books are falling piece. Need a little more. Ah, there we go. Just what I needed. Okay, so I've got some fun splattering going on. So these markers can do all kinds of things in addition to coloring. I love them. I'm just going to wipe that off so I don't get it all over everything else and set these over to the side. And they dry really quickly, which is also a plus. I know there are lots of sprays and things you can use to splatter with, and I use those too. But I love splattering with ink, and you can do that with paint brushes and all kinds of things by picking up your watercolor paints. Okay, back to our layout. I think we're just about ready to put it all together. I'm going to bring this one back in for you to see. See if I can um, get everything in the shot here. All right, I've got all of this built. I'm going to grab my photo again, and I'm just going to add some foam tape to it. I love to have a few things on my pages sort of popped up so that they stand out a little more, and I especially love doing that on a photo. I like doing it like I've matted this on some white daisy cardstock, but I like doing it um, even on the photo and not the mat. So both of those ways really make a photo pop. And so if you're putting multiple photos on a layout, it's fun to do this to the photo that you really want to stand out the most, maybe your largest photo you've chosen, and it just helps the eye go there first. Yes, you can tell I'm an avid user of foam tape. I love it. Um, I just, and I love it not to collapse in my book, so I like to cover a lot of the back. All right, I'm just going to lightly set this down about where I have it on the other page. Maybe a little higher, I think. There we go. I'm not going to push on it yet so I can still lift it a little bit here and there to add things to it. We've got our stack of books. We've got our cozy up with a good book, which I need to slide under there. That's cute. Our books are calling. Our books, I'm going to move those up just a little. We need our just one more chapter, which we'll add right here. And I'm going to bring in this sticker sheet and see if there's anything on this autumn books um, sticker sheet that we might be able to use. I'm thinking we might be able to use this read books that's red. That would work well. And we've got some little hearts and things that might look really cute on there. I've also brought a few um, embellishments with me, some blue ones, some red ones, black and white, and some, these are called clear sparkles. I thought we could add in there too. We'll just see which ones look the best. All right, I feel like I am ready to start committing to some of these things. Let's just put them down. Things come together really quickly when you're looking at something else you've already created. And I think I'm going to add some foam tape to the parts of the books that um, don't overlap onto the photo. As you can see, there's some stamping on the back there. When I stamp something and don't use it, quite often I'll just save that paper and reuse it on another project on the other side. I'd rather spend my money on all the fun embellishments than white cardstock when you, although I'm always and forever buying white cardstock. Okay, I've got my books. Direction. I'm gonna let it come up over that a little bit. Cute. And maybe some foam tape behind this, just one more chapter. I've already printed my journaling, knowing that where it was going to go and kind of the space I had since we're duplicating a layout. So I've got that with me that we'll add. Just one more chapter. 
which is so appropriate. I stayed with these guys and their baby sister about a week ago while their parents were on vacation. And um, every night, that is exactly what they wanted. In fact, Palmer had has this little princess, book of princess stories, and she, uh, every night we'd read one of her princess stories and she would beg for another one. So that's kind of the story that I told here about their love of books and staying with them and how much they loved to have me read to them at night before bedtime. So I'll add these and that'll be make it easier to accessorize a little bit so that we can work around that journaling. Let's see. That one is last. It's this one that's next. I also love to stagger my journaling strips. And I'm curious, um, do you guys like to handwrite your journaling or type it? I do both. I feel like it's important to get my handwriting on pages, but I have, when I have a larger story to tell or something that's not gonna fit in the space I've allotted, then I do like to print it. And I love how it looks right below that smaller um, stamp subtitle of just one more chapter, a little lopsided. Okay, I'm going to grab this, read books, because I feel like it needs a little something. Actually, I don't know where I'm going to put that yet. I'm going to see if there's anything else on here I want to use. Maybe this book. This will work. It's red, and ooh, I love it right there. So I'm going to grab a little, oh, let that guy sit for a second. I'm going to grab a little foam tape for the part that doesn't overlap the photo. Because that photo, as you know, is up on foam tape. So if I put it over that, it would be lopsided if I don't add foam tape to the. Okay, that's cute. Love that. And maybe read books should go. I like it right there. In fact, I kind of like that it creates this red. Um, what's the word I want? Motion going through my page. So I'm gonna get a skinnier width here. Do the same thing, let part of that overlap the photo. And then we will add our gems and call it, call it a layout. All right, I'm gonna start with the colors that I think might stand out the most because I want those to be positioned in a way that um, when you look at the page, they don't feel at all unbalanced. And then we'll work toward the colors that maybe are not as bright. So I want to use this darker blue because that's the color of this. These colors coordinate with our papers. And same with these. I've got the red and this darkest one is sapphire, or I mean scarlet, which is what I've been using here. And I thought maybe some white ones would look good on there. Probably not the black. I guess maybe I could use black. I've used some black stamping, but I kind of like that that's just for the stamping. And then who knows, maybe a few of these to give it a little bit of a Let's see here. I like to use my piercing tool to start adding these things. I'm thinking the red. Let's start with some red. I like that it's on the blue here, so I'm just going to add a few things. I've got some stars that I'm putting in with some dots because I feel like stars match superheroes, don't you? And I'm going to help my the eye follow the page, follow the story like this, like I've done with my splattering. So I'm just going to continue my um, embellishments down in a diagonal direction. So let's do a few blue ones. Maybe we need a few blue in here where it's on top of the red. So let me do a tiny blue star. There's three sizes in here too. There's large, medium, and small, which is nice because you can mix and match shapes and sizes. And also colors, like it would be fun if you were doing an all blue page to mix some of all of those together. All right, now let's bring in some white because white's going to work in both corners and I think maybe make a statement. So let's do a few of those. Okay, I like what's happening here with that um, motion through my page. Oh, I think it might be cute too. a star on either side of this. 
you stop and read that. It's amazing what you can do to help your brain and eye follow your page like you want it to or stop and read something. I just brought some focus right there and that's nice. And then I think these will add a little more personality to the corners too because they'll stand out. right there to keep it moving. One last one. Okay. I think I'm done with my page and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Should we look at it close up really quick? You can see some of the details that were created as we made this page together. Hopefully you learned some fun new things, tricks, techniques, tips. And um, this stamp set that we use today is extra popular right now and is available through August 31st on our site, as are all the papers you saw in both of the pages today. So let me bring that one in for one last time. And then I think that will do it for me. I just wanna say thanks for joining me. I hope it was worth your time and that you had a good time. I sure did.